Ladies and gentlemen, let us understand and know about writing the India growth story successfully along with PL's innovative product invest active and on this very note, I would like to invite Ms. Amisha Vora, Group Joint MD of Prabhudas Lilada, to tell us more about writing the India Growth Story successfully. Thank you, everybody, for making it from all across the country. And I was feeling so good. If I name a few, of course, starting from Surat, Baroda, Ahmedabad, Anand, Bharuj, Bilai, uh, Bilai, Bilaspur, Malda, Chennai, Kunur, and I'm sure so many places I will not be able to even repeat now, but we have got partners coming here from all across. Thank you, everyone. And the only little promise that I want to make that we will make sure that the time that you have invested, effort you have taken to come over here and be part of this event, when you go back in next to one year, your last three years growth and next year one year growth, well, there will be a marked difference. So, in my small presentation, I'm going to cover what I see as the key trends emerging in India. And because of which, I call this a transformation, not reforms. Tell me what is the next slide going to come as? <laughs> Who's the person helping me here? Thank you. Thank you so much. So my topic today is about transition, transformation, and the way this transformation is going to take off India to the next orbit. And why do I think that this is the possibility now? My key observations about the Indian economy is that right now, we as a nation are not quick fixing things. Quick fixing is there is a problem here, I have a pain, I take a medication, pain is gone. No. I am finding out why I have this pain. I am trying to treat the cause of the pain. So the reforms are structural in nature. What are the key pain areas we had as a country had always? Of course, we had short period 2003 to 2008. When the economy did very well, markets did very well, growth was phenomenal. Were we structurally sound? We were not structurally sound. Why? Because while we were growing, our all the deficits, be it fiscal, current account, or uh, trade deficits, all were growing. And somewhere, the supply was not managed well, so when things fell, it took us so long to recover. We are in a recovery cycle for almost more than a decade if you go to see. And we are finding, despite a majority government, why the growth is still so slow? Because the reforms are structural, it is leading to transformation. What are we doing? We are not getting enough revenues in budget and still to popularize all the vote bankers we want to spend, we don't know where the spending is going as a country. And because of which, higher deficit, higher inflation, higher interest rate, lower demand, that entire uh, vicious circle was going on and on. How are, we, how are we trying to correct it now? 
we started with aadhar if you ask me this is one of the most structural transformational reforms which can happen everybody is now mapped in one of the slides i will tell you there are now 110 crore people who are aadhar mapped the first thing which has happened is aadhar with next step that we took was the jandhan accounts and with those two put together the entire effort to direct things in terms of either subsidies or benefit became direct when you make direct benefit transfer it reaches the last mile the correct person but at the same time all leakages come out so there is development because the person receiving will consume anybody who consumes adds to the growth at the same time we also don't overspend the moment is a country we don't overspend our fiscal deficit is in control the fiscal deficit in control leads to lower inflation it is the lower inflation then which leads to lower interest rates and the whole consumption cycle of the economy stops i think this is the cycle of virtuous cycle that we are entering apart from that the two other things digital uh whatever we did as demonetization and now on the top of it gst what these three key changes are going to lead to i am a salon operator i am making so many income or so many uh, ads but i take everything in cash i don't pay any income tax i am very happy i have saved my 30% income tax what have i lost in the process have i lost anything yes because i am not building my track record of income my credit worthiness is getting impacted so tomorrow if i don't have capital i don't have don't have consistent income track record my ability to borrow comes down like me 70% of the population no population was not reporting income with that their credit worthiness was not there with their they were not able to borrow so their consumption spending be it on housing be it on house repair be it on any other uh, fast moving or durable consumer was not to the extent the demography of india and the growth of india can have but with this compulsory movement unleashed through digitization through demonetization and now with gst things will start getting reported so we go to the last round of the virtuous cycle which is more re reporting which will then help higher gdp higher credit worthiness will lead to higher investment it is a full process of cycle and i think we have very strongly entered into it and this since this is slow but this will lead to a very sustainable growth this will not have huge bumps in growth but growth will be very sustainable and whenever there is anything sustainable global investors indian investors will all find the whole journey much more for a longer period of time and that's how we start and we try and give little higher pe multiples i'm trying to relate what is broadly happening in the economy and for us as a country to what global investors are forming a perspective and then how it leads to a slightly higher multiple that we all keep worrying about that the pe multiples are very high so the one part uh, of the virtue cycle tells us that we are transforming it is also telling us that the growth is going to be more sustainable and somewhere because of this combination we are seeing some initial signs already unfolding the fdi inflows in india if you see from 14 15 16 has been on a continuous rise earlier we used to have only volatile money as we call it the fii money 
FDI is a stable money. You don't you bring it in into India, you don't take it back. FDI money generates employment, it generates GDP. So a stable, stronger, long-term money has started growing and it is not insignificant. It is a significant 50, 60 billion dollars a year. Of course, while we are talking about all these transformational activity, we always remain worried. Tomorrow the government changes, we will be back to square. But the current trend shows that the way Sephron is probably covering a good and larger part of India, probably in days to come, the strong governance will continue for a longer time. Now the four key trends about India which I want to highlight here. First is, we are the youngest, by 2020, India will be the youngest country in the world and our average age will be 29 years. Now what does a young country mean as compared to a country which is aging? A country which is aging has to nurse the population which is not working with pensions, medical uh, allowances, etc. While a young country has more hands to work, at the same time, young population has higher discretionary spends and it leads to uh, ability to adapt to the changes. Changes in skill sets, changes in coming through because of digitization will be much higher. So we will be the youngest country in the world by 2020. By 2035, because of the steady state growth, I am not taking 8%, 10% growth. With just 7% growth, it is predicted as per the uh, projections of World Bank, India will be the third largest economy just after US and China, leaving behind Japan, Germany, UK, France, Brazil, Italy, so on and so forth. So we'll be the youngest, we'll be one of the largest. And the best part is, we will be a country of mapped people. A mapped country is very accessible country. Information dissemination is possible faster. As, as of now, it says that we have 112 billion people who are with Aadhaar card. And last but not the least, it will be a connected India. Almost 50% of our population will be using internet by 2020. So we will be one of the most connected country in the world, almost close to China. In terms of absolute numbers, so in percentage penetration, US is higher, but size being our size being so big, we will also be in absolute numbers matching with China. Now comes the question. Correct? We are the youngest, we are the largest, we are transforming, we are connected, and we are men. So what? So what do I do? How does it impact me? How do I benefit out of it? And I feel one of the key underlying trend change which is likely to happen is that the physical asset attraction which India has nursed over, uh, you can say, century and over decades will gradually keep coming down. We were always, you know, physical assets is real estate, gold, diamond, we feel I can see that, I can hoard it, but beyond that, we had unaccounted money, it helps us to hoard it. As we become more mapped, more connected, all those avenues of hoarding and unaccounted thing will keep reducing. And so, from physical asset, a big shift will happen to financial asset. Now when that shift in household saving, when that shift happens, how big are those shifts typically? So we took a period, this period between 1982 
and 1997. Just in a period of 15 years, the household savings in US jumped 4x in favor of mutual fund and stock ownership. In 15 years, a jump of 4x came. But I think because that time the digitization was not so well entrenched in US, while India is transforming from physical to financial assets, the shift and the growth will be even more stiffer and it will be even more swifter because and this this 4x jump can mean from 5 crore portfolio we can reach to 20 crore folios out of 120 crore of population we have just 5 crore people having any kind of either mutual fund folio or bond, I mean mutual fund equity folio or bond folio or DMAT account. That's it. I am sure you all can imagine why generally I say currently we are at the right time at the right place. Most of the time when these two don't match, all the efforts don't need, lead to any results. But right now, we all are, and as, as, uh, as a business house, as well as my partners, we all are right place at right time. Because this, there is going to be a huge improvement towards these financial assets and huge improvement in penetration of financial assets. And some of the trend, of course, is evident as what shown in this graph. Once again, so the first transformational reforms which I spoke about tells us that financial assets, which is where most of us are operating, will have much higher growth than the kind of growth we saw in past one or two decades. Within that, the key question is, what do I do? So, what is the emerging scenario coming? What are the kind of opportunities and challenges there? And what do I think is going to be our strategy? So, there is this big rise which has happened in all discount broking houses. Be it online, be it offline. And a lot of people uh, have opened their accounts, some of the names being Zeroda and so on and so forth. Banks and other, manuf uh, other uh, financial institutions also have their presence in uh, now disseminating or distributing financial assets. Of course, there are fintech-based players. There are only advisory firms who do only research. And there are premium brokerages also. We have to decide, based on our strategy, then who fits as our customers. So how do we decide? Out of this, where do we fall? Are we discounters? Are we going to be pure advisory? Are we going to be aggregators? Or we are going to be premium brokerage? I think the strategy depends on who we are. And in general parlance, if you will ask anybody, we feel Prabhudas Liladhar is recognized on some of these three pillars. I think across the country, if you ask anybody, the first thing they would associate Prabhudas Liladhar's name will be with integrity and ethics, and it's one of the most respected national brands. The second thing people with associate with the brand is its award-winning research. And the third important thing we found people associate with us, you know, as apart from so many direct customers, some of the partners also over sitting over here are running their franchisee as relationship business, not price-based business. They don't go and say, okay, I will do your work at 5 say give me business. Their proposition is, I'm going to make a difference to your wealth creation journey 
Please don't talk about my brokerage. That is called relationship business, not price business. In price business, you go, get it at a lower price, make your money, you don't care what the investor or the customer has got in return, you don't want to show him face again. So, so there is a huge difference between a relationship business and a price-based business. So we think that the key three pillars of our strategy should be our brand, our research, and our relationship business. With that, now what does leverage research mean? People say, Ravdas, leather research is good. So what? I think the so what has to be, did it deliver better returns? Did investor make better money? I feel a lot of customers, whether directly or through our franchises and partners, come to Prabhudas Ladar because somewhere at the back of their mind, they have this feeling that if I go through Prabhudas Ladar, all my investments, I will make good money. When they come through partners also, because of the partner's knowledge, as also the brand behind the partner, they have this feeling. And this is a brand promise which we have to try to deliver. It's only when we deliver the brand promise is the customer going to be with us for a longer time. Second thing, leverage technology. How do I leverage technology to increase the rate of my growth? Not grow, but increase the rate of my growth. And to that end, a lot of new product launches we are going to cover in the second half, which will make the all cumbersome uh, efforts of getting in the client, showing reporting to client, all the thing of yesterday, and everything will be with the client on their hands. And of course, we have to strive as Prabhudas Leeladar team, whether the team sits on the role of PL, at head office, at branches, or you all as my partner, to be best in class in terms of service. To that, also, that end also, we have launched some initiatives in the past, which my team will cover in the second half. And with all this, when we have clarity, we have to leverage brand by acquiring very aggressively. <laughs> I call this my desire and our agenda. And the reason being, there are, when I talk about a young, a large, a digitally mapped India and more money coming into financial assets, it to some extent means that this money has not had the kind of experience in the market which some of the veterans sitting on the first bench has, who can distinguish between different quality of stocks, knowing what is a multi-bagger, what risk return a multi-bagger has, what risk return a steady, uh, you know, frontline nifty stock has. They don't know all these distinctions so well. And to grow our businesses, we just can't rely on that circle which is very knowledgeable in the market. We will also have to travel to that which wants to enter the market. And for that, we have come out with this product which we call, which we call Invest Excel. And I'm in a while going to take you all through that product Invest Excel. Secondly, when we say we utilize the underlying reforms and trends to offer end-to-end -end solution to partner as clients by opening accounts instantly by powerful apps and tools and by mobile web-based comprehensive reporting, which is what will be covered during the day.